Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to our Microsoft Flight Simulator's Evolution of Aircraft Design. Uh, this episode is called The Decline of General Aviation, even though in some ways people won't see this as the decline, you see what I mean. So we've covered up every decade up until this point, and this next video is going to be two decades, 1980 through 1999. And the reason for this, of course, is because of what happens. In the early 1980s, of course, as you're well aware, as I've been hinting at, uh, aviation was getting more expensive much more expensive. And by the early to mid 1980s, your Cessna 172, of which the Cessna company would literally sell thousands per year, were suddenly selling tens or even hundreds of uh, airplanes per year. So you're talking watching general aviation, if this were the thing, go like this, as the cost of general aviation went like this. Uh, many, many factors affect that, of course. Uh, one thing, of course, liability, uh, the way that aircraft companies could be in trouble for airplanes that didn't work properly. Uh, you had the increase of materials, you had the greater amounts of competition, you had the less interest, the increasing energy prices. So many things came together all at one time. And all of a sudden, those companies stopped producing airplanes. Um, they got so bad that if you look at the Cessna 172, which everybody loves, look at the gap between the model year R and the model year S Cessna, and you realize it was almost 20 years. Uh, the 152 we saw in the previous episode, they just stopped making it. And of course, a couple companies um, limped along during that era. You saw some really neat planes like the Beechcraft Duke, which we don't have just yet. And we also see planes like this, which is a Mooney 20. Now, the original Mooney 20 actually goes back quite a bit further. And uh, one of the things I want to share is just what makes this plane different. And keep in mind, this is a later version of a Mooney, but it still gives you an idea of what we got in the 80s and early 90s. First thing you want to observe is if you take a look at the surface of this plane, this thing is aerodynamically refined. And you can see the little access panels for the fuel tanks here. And you actually can see we have things, these little stall strips down there, as well as our stall meter. I love the fact that there's a little fuel gauge on the wing here. Oh, we've got other fun things. Because this aircraft is so beautifully aerodynamic, it actually has pop-up speed brakes in it, just to give you an idea of how high performance this aircraft is. Now, there's a couple other things that came out of this. Uh, during the 70s, of course, people tried to make them more economical. During the 80s, they said, well, the only people who can afford airplanes are people who have money, so um, let's make everything retractable landing gear and put 300 horsepower in it, which led to aircraft like this, like your Moody Evasion. On the interior of the airplane, you're probably noticing Things are getting a little bit neater, uh, just in general. You'll notice we're arranging switches basically by purpose, all kind of uh, built together. We're still not pressurized, by the way. You'll notice our yokes. Uh, we're going to put a little bit of detail in our yoke here with this nice leather handle, but you'll notice we have a quite a bit more options on this here. You'll also observe that we have automatic pilots, which are becoming much more prevalent in aircraft built in the 80s and 90s because the only people who could afford an airplane was somebody who had it. You also had powered elevator trim, which is wonderful. Um, your controls are relatively straightforward and uh, sort of standardized. This Moody does and have the cow flaps that we had to worry about. You'll also notice our landing gear. We've got all of our emergency stuff located right down on the floor. The materials are about as nice as you can make an airplane. And one of the things I love is you get this kind of plastic interior with this extremely expensive leather. It's just kind of a little uh, out of place there and it kind of cracks me up a little bit. You'll also notice the folks in the back seat have room. The folks in the back seat can plug in their own headphones. Oh, that's a bit of a luxury. But the incredible thing here was this amazing attention to, well, if you're going to make an airplane, you might as well make the highest performance airplane you want. So what a lot of manufacturers did in the 80s is they actually took existing airframes like our Mooney here, and simply what they did is they just kept throwing more power into it, throwing more power into it. Uh, they weren't investing in a new technology. This is a fuel-injected airplane, by the way. It was very difficult to certify new technologies of the era, but uh, they still managed to get some of these kinds of innovations like this. And you had airplanes that had incredibly high performance with relatively small packages simply by taking what sort of existing existed back in the day and improving upon them. We also had the ubiquitous uh, retractable landing gear and a lot of general aviation planes kind of of that era. And of course our flaps, uh, which we were very, very familiar with at this particular point, uh, they're still gonna be electric. Uh, you had some hydraulic, depending on uh, the nature of the different flap technologies that you had, but that got progressively better as well. Instrumentation, uh, you'll probably notice there's a lot of optimization for usability here. Whether or not you're flying an older Mooney or you're flying a 1980s Mooney, uh, you'll probably notice that a lot of these things were simplified. A lot of the gauges had two different modes. So they had a digital version as well as a conventional version to make it easier to read. You will also notice the presence of instrument stuff almost all the time. Uh, we also, of course, had altitude alerters and uh, different functionality, assuming that you have access to it. But there's a general focus in bringing in more digital displays to give you, the pilot, a much more accurate reading of the, what's going on inside of your plane. You will also get things like fuel flow totaling tools. Uh, again, these have been around forever, but they give you some staggering capabilities. But the most fascinating thing about this plane and why I find this one to be an excellent example of 80s and 90s technology here is the presence of the gigantic fuel tanks on this thing. 
95-gallon fuel tanks. Um, this aircraft, of course, uh, bringing it up to altitude, you have the capability to travel almost 200 knots with it. Again, having that much horsepower in a little cow like that with a super-duper-duper aerodynamic plane is going to make a massive, massive thread of difference. But incredibly, other than things like adding a little more power here and there, modernizing the interiors, there were so few aircraft that were new designs or even new builds built all the way from, like I said, about the mid 80s through the late 90s. So when we finally got some new technologies, uh, namely personal computing, which became progressively more accessible, it got sort of interesting when we actually saw the resulting aircraft, which we'll take a look at now. Fortunately, it didn't stop innovation. And we started getting aircraft like this 1997 example. This is actually a modernized version of the 97. This would be the 2016 model, but the basic idea is going to be the remain the same of the Diamond 40. Now, the interesting thing is a lot of aircraft innovation was actually being done by companies outside of the United States and uh, kind of the major players there, especially you know, as the former Soviet Union collapsed and you started getting all sorts of uh, trading of all sorts of really, really good ideas. But you will notice so many changes between this and what we saw in the 80s. I ignore two digital displays here. The regular diamond wouldn't have anything this nice. But you'll notice there's not a single rivet here. Here. Everything is completely flush because we're getting away from a metal. Uh, we're going to fiberglass, carbon fiber materials like that. We have some in this aircraft. This particular one has got winglets on it. Again, this would be the 2016 version, so you'll have to ignore that aspect of it. You're seeing a lot of other deals. Uh, you're seeing incredible visibility out the front of this aircraft, Tom. Um, again, using this nice bubble cockpit. You're seeing the presence of, instead of having 50 handles, a single handle to control. There's no longer a mixture control here. Everything is done with a throttle instead. You also see very, very, very simplified controls for the purposes of turning everything on and off. You also, of course, we have a very convoluted fuel system in here. You also see the beginning of digital displays. Again, this is a much more modern digital display than you would found in an earlier version of a Diamond 40, but it gives you a good idea. You also have the presence of FADEC. Uh, that's basically going to be an engine control system that will digitally make sure everything's running the way it needs to be. Uh, now, these aircraft designs, of course, took advantage of all the latest in computing technology when they were developed. I mean, look at how easy it is to see out of this thing. It's bizarre. But one of the advantages to all of that, of course, is perfect aerodynamic optimization. You'll notice this aircraft's got kind of a wasp waist kind of thing going on. Little teeny tiny thin tail. But that enables us to get performance that is undreamed of when it came to aircraft design. You know, when this airplane came out in the late 1990s, it really it revolutionized so many different components. There are actually a lot of manufacturers about this time who were starting to work on these sort of designs. But because they had so much capability to design and refine and use these ultra lightweight materials, they were able to make aircraft that had less horsepower than the preceding generation, but could get significantly, like one and a half times better performance. Another advantage, of course, they were able to take advantage of because of all this nice modeling technology is now they suddenly were in a place where they could finally start to deal with some of the aerodynamic challenges of the past, uh, things like stalling aggressively. A lot of that could actually be improved upon and made it so that it would be less likely to occur. Now, one thing I always get a kick out of with this is there's one unified power level in this. So when I want 75% power, I pull it back and everything sets itself to 75% power. Now, the earlier versions of the Diamonds did not have that capability. Oh, this is something the later versions of the Diamonds added. But it just gives you an idea of just how different this is. And again, starting to see things like glass cockpit displays rather than having everything being a conventional uh, gauge arrangement. In our final video, of course, uh, we'll take that to the nth degree, but uh, we'll look at that one later on. Other innovations, of course, at this time is you're starting to get better fuel economy because you're starting to get fuel-injected engines, which are very, very carefully metered and precisely controlled. You're also seeing the presence of systems that protect the aircraft. Uh, this particular one does not have it, but uh, we'll deal with that when we get to the 2000s. Uh, these aircraft are quieter. They're going to have better reliability. They're going to be less messy. Uh, their fuel economy is going to be substantially better. They're going to be an easier ride. They're going to be more comfortable. You'll notice the presence of the stick here. Um, the interesting thing is these seats don't adjust. The rudders do. Isn't that different? And again, it's just kind of a diamond thing. And again, for your passengers in the back, this is what they get to see. And this is how they get to relax. And this a nice, enjoyable flight like this. Incredible evolution. And again, this is kind of the beginning of the new age of different airplane designs. But uh, the new age of airplane designs, we'll have to wait for our next video on the Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, Evolution of Aircraft Design. Enjoy.